One more time. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Carrie, and this channel is all about Hawaii food and family. And today we're <laughs> today we are talking about bentos in Hawaii, and we're gonna be making a bento and giving you some ideas, hopefully that you can use in your everyday life if you're going to the beach or going to on a picnic. Hopefully this can give you some ideas. So grandma, what do you remember? Oh, this is grandma and this is my mom and we cook a lot together in the kitchen. This is three generations of cooking. What do you remember, Grandma, about cooking bento, or making bento? Yeah, that's, well, I remember we, this is that same thing we, do, we did before. What did, we, you, what did you make, what kind of food, what, what kind of food would you put in the bento? The musume. That's a bottle. That's a bottle. <laughs> In the musubi, yeah. And then, mom, what do you remember about grandma? What they would make? Well, she, like she she mentioned earlier, the ume, but in the musubi, right? And lots of fried chicken. You made really good fried chicken, mom. We used to have carrot sticks, a lot of carrot sticks. Sometimes namasu and um, egg, and and hot dogs, fried and hot dogs. Can't forget you. the hot yes. dogs. Today on our menu will be namasu tamago yaki. Tonkatsu, which is pork, fried pork cutlets, and we can't forget the ume, right? Mm -hmm. So with, without further ado, let's hop right in. Grandma starts by cutting off the ends of the cucumber and taking those ends and rubbing it against the cucumber's body. This helps take out the bitterness. So right now, Grandma is showing us how she cuts cucumber for namasu. And namasu is a pickled vegetable that um, you can find in all kinds of dishes. And growing up, I remember it being like a side dish that you would have at parties and it's just kind of like a, an, an extra salad on the side. It's a very sweet and savory Sweetness. kind of uh, vegetable dish. So my mom is taking out the seeds and grandma is going to cut into small slices. I'm watching grandma cut the cucumber and it's really interesting because she's cutting like um, three, uh, what, what would you say? Like too short, not two, all the way. Yeah. Too short, not all the way. And it's so thin. Um, and then it's like, do you see it here? And so it's, a, it's about a quarter of an inch thick each piece. And I think my mom said that this is what gets the flavor in more of the cucumber. And this is how grandma's always made her namasu. So it comes back, yeah. And what's interesting is that it's just, it's like memory um, recall or something. She just remembers this technique. So what we're adding in our namasu today is cucumber, we're adding carrots, and we are also adding a daikon. And daikon is Japanese radish. And I got this specific piece at Marukai. And so if you go to the Japanese market, they have these available like this, but you can basically get daikon out with me or radish at pretty much any market and pickle it and it's very, very good. And this one says daikon Japan. So I don't know if that's different, but maybe it's sweeter. Grandma, why do you make the slits? How come you make the slits in the middle? Because it's easy to, when you make talk that, it's yeah. to catch. Inside. You can make one one, but doesn't look good. Oh. So the recipe I found, we have the rice vinegar, we have sugar, we have salt, and then we're gonna put ginger. No. You wanna put? You can put. You never put. No. She put. Oh, she put vinegar. You can put. Okay, we go put. We go put. <laughs> okay. Okay, here. Okay. How do you cut daikon? So grandma is cutting the um, daikon the same way as she cut the, the cucumber, which I think is interesting. So I would have thought we would have cut it thinner. Mm. Mm, it is sweet actually. Some, some of them are bitter. You can eat this one like by itself. It's interesting though, grandma is still very fast at her, um, how she cuts things. Grandma also cuts the carrots the same way as she cuts both the daikon and the cucumber. I 
Now we have our cucumber, carrots, and daikon, and we're gonna mix it with our sauce ingredients. So we're gonna start with our rice vinegar. And mom, why do we use rice vinegar? Um, I think it's a milder form of vinegar. Sweeter, yeah. yeah. And then we have sugar. And we have salt. And then we are also including ginger. So I was actually looking up different Namatsu recipes and um, I, I kind of put a couple together. I saw some with just the sugar and the salt. And then I saw some with the vinegar and ginger, so I kind of mix it together and hopefully it'll be a really good flavor. It smells really nice. We're putting it together. What is it? Is it good? I think it needs a little more salt. More salt. Huh? Yeah, not. Well, not, not. Just a little bit more salt. Mom said more salt. If you're interested in making this namasu recipe, the recipe is listed in the description box below. Mmm, good. It's good with the ginger. Mm. Yeah. Now we put it all together. Okay. Okay, we start with the cucumber. And then the carrots. And carrots. Daikon. And then we just mix, mix, mix. Is this how you do it, Grandma? Yeah. You mix, mix, mix. You mix, mix, mix. Is this how? Is this correct? So, Grandma, this is going to be part of our bento. We leave this now for about 30 minutes and it should be good. It's not like like other pickled things where you have to leave for over a day. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. That's just the type of vegetable this is. I mean, it could last several days. We're, we're making a video, so you have to smile. <laughs> So for this next dish, Reed's going to be making our tamagoyaki. Have you made tamagoyaki before? I've made tamago. <laughs> but not the yaki part. Well, because mine are not, never yaki. <laughs> They're usually really good. So we are we actually got inspiration. We got a recipe from this cookbook I just want to share. It's a star advertiser, a Japanese kitchen, Hawaii cooks cookbook and we are going to be trying it and it's going to be a little bit different than a regular tamago yaki because we're doing the horenzo no tamago maki and this is basically a spinach egg roll which i think sounds really delicious and it gives a unique spin to regular tamago yaki okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sauce that the spinach is going to sit in um, and marinate in before we put it and mix it with the egg and um we're gonna do this uh, my style of cooking, so I usually do things by I eyeball it. So, recipe calls for about three tablespoons of shoyu. I'm gonna eyeball it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in rice vinegar. If you're interested in making this recipe, it is listed in the description box below. We added in roughly around two tablespoons of that. We're gonna add in a little bit of sugar. Okay, so we're mixing the sauce. And we want the sugar to dissolve in the liquid. That's what it's going to look like. Nice light brown color. And we'll just wait for the spinach. Blanch the spinach in boiling water till it becomes soft and then soak in the shoyu mixture. 
Okay, let's heat up this rectangle pan. Let's put it on medium high while we're waiting for the pan to heat up. We were going to um, put out if anybody has any questions for Reed or myself, write it down in the comments if there are anything that you want to ask us. We have a couple that we're just putting together now, so we are planning to do a future video where we answer some of your questions. So make sure you leave us a comment. Also, like and subscribe. This is um, Carrie's passion project, and so <laughs> she really wants people to follow her and uh, grow along with her as she gets better at her YouTube journey. So please, mm -hmm. if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and like this video as well, and you can get future content from this person. It's been a fun journey so far, and my favorite part is including everyone that I love around me. So let's add in the egg. So what I did was I uh, scrambled two eggs. Scrambled two eggs in here and we're just gonna add it into this rectangle pan. All right, that looks good. Okay, so what you wanna do is, you wanna kinda get the bottom cooked first is what I learned from previous um, omelets uh, before we put in things like the spinach uh, so that um, it doesn't burn on the bottom. Anyway. We add some more spinach into here. And we're just gonna soak it. And then we learned from the first one to not put so much spinach, because I think that was part of the reason why it had a hard time folding, and it also had a hard time cutting. So it's getting like this. If any of you guys have a better way to do this, hit me up in the comments. Because I'm an amateur when it comes to flipping this in a square pan. Make sure to watch till the end to see our final bento box. pretty good. It didn't break. What yeah. did that accomplish? I don't know, but we should run that back in slow motion. Okay, so while Reed is finishing the egg, what I've been doing is I've been getting the tonkatsu, um, just drying out the meat, the pork, and also putting salt and pepper on it. Tonkatsu is a very easy dish to make. It's one of the dishes that I know how to make pretty well, and I make Farid at home um, every, you know, every month or so, and something that he really enjoys as well. He's shaking his head as I say every month, but I mean, I make this sometimes. So it's very easy, and that's why that's why I like to make it. But basically, um, you're gonna get pork. And you can also do this with chicken as well. Um, but I like to use pork, especially because uh, it comes thinner generally and it's just easier to cook. It doesn't take as long as chicken. So I choose to make tonkatsu over chicken katsu. And you just need some flour. So you're just gonna get some flour and then you're gonna get some egg. And I, I beat three eggs in here. They were and, bad. <laughs> and then you're gonna get some panko or Japanese breaded crumbs. And that's basically all need. And then you need just a, a pan with some oil in it. And we're just using vegetable oil. And I cook my tonkatsu usually like on a medium heat because I don't want it to get um, burnt. So I start there. Oh, I also need some place to put the tonkatsu after. So after we're done cooking the tonkatsu, I'm gonna put it in this pan that I just put together now. And what I did to the, um, the pork ahead of time is I I let it sit out for about um, an hour and just so it kind of, it got to room temperature and then I salted, I, oh, there's a fly in the house. I salted, I peppered it and I dried it out so it doesn't, it, it's, uh, the moisture came out. I just tested the batter, I mean the oil, I just put my um, chopsticks in and it's sizzling up so I'm pretty sure that it is ready to go. So I'm just gonna add in our first piece of katsu 
sizzling. So the general steps to making tonkatsu is you're gonna put it in flour first. You're gonna dip it in flour. And you're gonna make sure you get all sides. And after the flour, you kind of dust it off. And then you put it in egg. And you want to make sure you get egg all over. And once it looks really good, then you move it to the panko. You want to make sure you get every area of the pork. Then you just put it in the fryer. How do you know when the tonkatsu is cooked? Uh, when it starts to get golden brown and crispy on one side, then you flip it. And then what I usually do is I'll just like poke it with the chopstick. <laughs> if it goes through and it goes through easily, then I know that it's cooked. The reason why I chose to make uh, tonkatsu for our bento is because I, I find that it's an easy dish to bring out and you know when you're at the beach or when you are doing something outdoors. This is kind of a nice treat after an event like that. And um, you know, it just makes for an easy lunch. Who doesn't like fried chicken or fried pork? But what I think to really make the difference when you are making tonkatsu is taking off the moisture that comes you know, with the pork. So like letting it sit and kind of demoisturize, it will make a difference in how the batter is able to stick to your pork. We're gonna see if this one's ready by poking it in. And it got, it went in a little smoothly. And I think it needs a, probably about one or two more minutes. So when it is golden brown on both sides, like this, and again, I'm cooking it at medium, right? And it, it also depends on like how thick your meat is, obviously. But the thinner that it is, then the faster it'll cook. And these are pretty thin but um, when it looks like this, then generally it's ready. Okay, so I'm going to now cut our first tonkatsu. Ooh. And you want it to be crispy and juicy on the inside. Is it cooked? I think so. I think it's cooked. All right, tonkatsu. Hi. Are trying our tonkatsu. Cheers, itadakimasu. Hey, look at that. Look at that one. Itadakimasu. Mmm. How did I do? Mine's a little raw. Very good, Tyler. It's very good. It's soft crispy. and crispy, and the tonkatsu, the pork itself is salty. Mm. So, Okay, so now we're putting our bento box together. And generally, you would use white rice, but our family, we eat brown rice just because it's healthier. And that's all we have today is brown rice. I forgot to buy white rice. So we're gonna be adding brown rice to our bento. And this bento box I found at Marukai. And, um, you know, I just thought it was a nice way to showcase what we are making. And we'll make a thin layer of rice because we try not to eat that much rice. Rice on the bottom. And then I bought Hachi Mitsu Ume from Marukai. This is quote unquote the really good ume. Kathy is telling me that Hachi Mitsu means honey, so it's a sweet ume. Or sweet and sour ume. And if you don't know what ume is, it's it's a pickled plum. We're gonna put that in the middle there because you always want an ume in your rice. So we're gonna add our katsu. So read cut some nicely cut cabbage. We're gonna add this to the bottom of our bento box. And cabbage really all it does is it just gives it a nice color. Um, and we put this also like under sashimi and other things. And then we're going to add in our tonkatsu. 
and then we are going to add in a little bit of the namasu that we made and we're gonna call this chunky namasu because when grandma was cutting it came out a little chunky so our chunky namasu which has cucumber carrot and daikon this is our pickled veggies here and we're also going to add in our tamago yaki our spinach roll and so we did a great job cutting our spinach roll and we'll, we'll add in this one and we're going to add in a couple pieces here like that three pieces there and then just for some garnish we're going to also add in some cherry tomato and we can put the cherry tomato here just for some color like that. maybe yeah is our bento box and that is how you make tonkatsu bento box i hope you guys enjoyed watching and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in the next video